to Lacombe County Library's summer reading program, Tales, of Wh Tales and Tales. This program is a video tutorial for the Take and Make kits for the Beaded Animal Craft. My name is Miss Vicki and I'm going to walk you through it. Some of you may have adults in your life that <laughs> have experienced and done these things, these particular crafts, uh, a lot, like me. Um, and if they have, great, you have an extra person that can help you. Um, the video tutorial also may be good to jog their memory if they can't remember exactly how it was done, like me. So, um, in each kit, you will have uh, enough beads for two out of the three creatures. Um, and each kit is going to be randomized. We're going to um, just hand them out, uh, and you're going to get one of three different versions. We're going to have wriggling reptiles. There's also one for awesome ocean life and marvelous mammals. And uh, each one's going to have three different creatures. You can choose to make two uh, of them and then um, show them off to your friends. Or if you'd like, you can even go get more beads and more key rings and make more of them because there's a lot of patterns out there on the internet, I promise. So today we're going to work, this time we're going to work on um, reptiles. In each kit, you should have received a, an adequate amount of gimp cord. Uh, it's because we were banded together. It's all one length usually, um, and you'll need to cut it down with a, a measured out with a yardstick and scissors. Uh, it also will have some key rings. It should have two key rings, so one for each of your critters. Um, they're not super exciting, but if you have a key ring at home you'd rather use, you're welcome to. Um, it also comes with a, a good amount of beads. Um, some black ones and mostly green. Black ones for the eyeballs, because that's important. Um, I also recommend from home a bowl, at least one, because they will roll everywhere and you'll be chasing them and you'll lose them and then you'll be able to finish your project. Uh, you'll need a pair of scissors. Uh, they could be just simple craft scissors, just the plastic ones with a metal blade is fine, as long as they cut through the cord. Um, you'll also need a ruler, or in my case, a yardstick. Because the cordage in the pattern is measured out by yards, you'll just need to take a, a ruler and measure it three times to make the yard, because there are three feet in a yard. I just like my yardstick because it unfolds. So, as we go, um, first thing you want to do is empty out your beads into a bowl or into a very careful pile if you don't have a bowl available. I'm going to go through and show you three different animals that you can do with this kit. Um, the first one I'll show you is the gecko. He is a little lizard and he is absolutely adorable. The second one I'll show you is Leech the frog. He is a little froggy and we'll go a little closer up and I'll show it to you each time I do him. Um, little frog. He's really cute. And my favorite of the kit is Coils the Snake because he's huge. Just so you know, if you make Coils the Snake, you may only have the enough beads to make the gecko as well because you may not have enough beads for the snake and the frog um, because the snake is just so massive. Uh, if you do want to do all three, uh, you are able to go and easily and inexpensively pick up beads and gimp cord and key rings from your local craft store. I got this at Walmart and Hobby Lobby locally. So those are absolutely easy enough. You'll also want to get some gimp cord. I picked up a pack here. This was a couple bucks, but not too expensive. And some just a pack of key rings you can get in the jewelry section, jewelry making or crafting section. So they're not hard to find if you wanted to continue or do more of them. Like I said, the internet is chock full of patterns for various animals and things that you can do, so the sky is the limit, essentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in um, and we're going to um, do each individual animal uh, close up so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Some of the parts are a little fiddly. Um, in, this, in the reptiles, it's not too bad. Some of the uh, ocean life and the mammals get a little fiddly, so it takes a little bit coordination, um, but I'll still show you how to do all of these. Again, thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. Um, just a side note, in case your internet decides to buffer or YouTube decides to have a fit, uh, each kit will also come wrapped in uh, picture instructions with pictures and written instructions so you can follow along. We just feel like a video may be a little easier to follow. All right, we'll be right back. All right, the last one that I'm doing that you can skip to is Coils the Cobra. He is of course the one that takes the most amount of beads, so of course you want to make sure that 
if you're doing the coils, the cobra, if you're doing the gecko, or purchasing or sourcing extra beads. Uh, this is one of my favorites because he's just, you know, so big. And uh, he's a lot, he's actually fairly easy to do. He's not very difficult. Um, again, up to you. Patterning is up to you. I use a slightly different type of green bead with this one. Uh, a little more opaque than translucent. Uh, but we can definitely, you can do whatever with what you have. He's so long. He's like a, he's, he's a good, let's see, he's a good foot and a half long, I think. About 16 inches long. All said and done. And you can even, if you wanted to, make extra beads, you can even make him longer if you like. That's totally up to you. So, with Coils the Cobra, on our pattern, which is right here, which you'll have in your kit. Let's see if I can get to the camera here. It says he takes three yards of cord and 121 beads. So 121 beads for Coils the Cobra. But to start out, we'll measure out our cord. Um, I'm using white cord. Yours should come with black cord because that's the kind we got. Um, this is just a little extra that we have sitting around, so we're going to go ahead and measure out three yards. Get your yardstick or your ruler. Three times three is nine, so it'll be nine feet if all you have is a ruler. One, two, three. And of course, just like all the other ones, uh, they usually give you a little extra cordage uh, in length built in, just in case. Uh, so if you're off by a few inches or you don't quite have enough, you'll be fine. All right. And in case you skipped over the um, first two to get straight to the snake. Uh, to, in order to get started, we're going to find the two ends of your cord, put them side by side, and then pull the whole thing through your hand until you find a loop. At the end, that is the center. That is the middle of your string. Make sure that is nice and flat and not twisted. And then what you're gonna do is find your keychain right here. Put it through the keychain. All right, make a loop just like that. And then you're gonna pull the other end. It doesn't really matter if it's kind of got the opposite end on there, we can fix that. Take the opposite end, the two loose ends, and kind of thread them through there, kind of make a knot. So you pull that all the way through, and then shift it down to the bottom and pull it snug like that. And make sure your clippy bit's on the top now, because otherwise you can't clip your animal to your backpack or keychain or whatever. Um, what I've done here is because you need something to anchor it to, let's see if I can get a view, is I've actually taped on some cord, this is just the top of it, uh, kind of to the table. You can do something as simple as uh, tying it to your bedpost with a string. You can um, have a friend hold it. I've seen people actually use their toes uh, so that they're... Uh, they tie it a string and then hook it to the string around their toe and they can use their foot as tension because you really need tension with this one. And with this particular one, I may run out of space. So I may end up having to uh, pause and shift so that you can see me at some point. But for right now, we'll do it this way. So to start, Coils the Cobra starts. If you're looking at your pattern along with me, he starts with two beads. And since all we have is green, we are going to do green. We have a uh, translucent green and we have sparkly green in this batch. Um, the kit you got may have had uh, some slightly different variations. You may have had some more opaque beads, uh, depending on where that kit was in the production process. You may get some more opaque beads like that one, um, and or that I used in this coils here. Um, and that is completely up to you. Um, like I said with the other two, the patterning you use on your animal is completely up to you. Um, in nature, no two animals have the same pattern. so. Um, it's very reasonable to expect that every animal that you make is going to be a little bit different. And you'll find this animal is going to be a little different than the first one that I made that I showed you as my demonstration. All right, so I'm going to start off with two. Again, let's get you hooked on that. There we go. And I do tend to talk to my craft projects. That is what I do. It makes me feel better. And if you talk to your craft projects, that's okay too. That's totally normal. Let's make sure we get them all lined up. Oh, you're twisted. That's your problem. Sometimes you just gotta twist it around a little bit, finagle it. There we go. Okay, start with two. And the next row, if you look on your pattern, you're gonna see two of the beads are slightly different colors. 
Um, that means that's where you put the eyes. And the eyes, in your kit you should have four uh, black beads. And those black beads are the ones that are going to be the eyes. And because I like a bit of sparkle, I'm going to put some sparkle in there. And I'm probably going to run a line of sparkle just like I did um, on the uh, demonstration when I want to run a line of sparkle right down its middle. So you start with the bead on the outside because you're going to make your pattern. And the way you string it on here is going to be the way it's going to appear on your snake. So just like that. Okay. So now we're going to put it all the way down. And I'm going to find the other end because right now we have a lot of cord. It gets a little bit easier toward the end when you have less cord to work with because you don't have to string through 15 yards. Well, it feels like 15 yards of cord, but it's really only like a yard and a half. It feels like a lot. So I'm going to string that through and then just, you know, do your best to keep it centered and snug. At this point, it's not going to stay snug because there's not enough weight from the beads above it to keep it. And that's okay. That's totally normal. So the next row is four more beads. And if I'm going to maintain a glittery center, he's going to have a sparkly center. I'll do a pattern like this. Like again, you can do whatever pattern you like. And if you happen to have brightly colored beads, there's nothing saying you can't have a neon pink cobra. There is no rule against it. We just didn't pack any neon pink or neon purple uh, beads in the kit, so. <laughs> <coughs> I know you're watching this in the summertime, but it is spring and allergies are crazy right now. So we have four, and again, like I said, you can just snug things down, pull on the cord, make sure they're, they're tight. Now don't do too tight or else your snake's gonna be weird looking and wonky, so. Uh, okay, that's four. The next row, and you can count the beads, always count the beads in the rows. We've got four, four, and one, two, three, four, five. So we'll have five, which means I'm going to go to a three sparkles in the middle. And sometimes I find it's helpful to lay out my pattern ahead of time, especially when you want to do something a little more complicated. Um, you can make it as complicated or as simple as you like, or you can just com go completely random and grab them, and don't worry about if they go to a pattern or not. That can be fun too. There's nothing against that. Nothing saying you can't. So laying out your beads ahead of time if you want to do a complicated pattern is actually super helpful. Especially if you want to make one that, like sometimes they have beaded animals that have like spots on them. You want to make sure the spots are where they're supposed to be. Um, so laying it out can be super helpful. All right. So that helps me. That's that. So you can see that the top of his head is taking shape, like so. So we have five, and now we need to go to six. Stop. So we'll go down to two again. Because sometimes it's a little bit weird um, when you're doing them from odd to even. You can't always do the stripes the same. But it's just up to you. And what you want to do, if you want to do it all sparkly, if you want to do it all neon, pink, purple, yellow, orange, up to you. So the snake is fairly straightforward. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of technical things. Like some of the other animals in the reptiles, uh, like the gecko has a little bit of technical stuff and the frog has a few technical aspects to it. Uh, but the coil snake is actually fairly straightforward. Let's see, that was five, six, right? Yeah, six. So we have five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So I'll go back to three sparkles in the middle. And then two on each side, we'll make seven. So, so while I am working on the oh so exciting just threading beads um, aspect, Let's uh, talk about snakes, because they're pretty cool creatures. They can be a little creepy, and sometimes people don't like them because they slither, and people think they're dangerous, and sometimes there are snakes out there. Especially around here, we have the cottonmouth snake, and the rattles rattlesnake. We have rattlesnakes around here. Um, co I know the uh, cottonmouth snake we have. Uh, that are, They can be poisonous, but they generally aren't aggressive. They bite if they are threatened. So snakes are carnivores, which means they eat primarily meat. Um, 
and depending on how big they are, they could eat something as small as bugs or crickets, and sometimes they can eat something, if they're large, like the cobras and the boa constrictors, they could eat something as large as a pig or a cow. That's a big meal. That was a seven, right? Six, seven, so we have six. Back to six. Um, snakes don't have eyelids. That's a fun fact. Um, and they can't chew their food, so everything they eat has to be swallowed whole. Oh. Oh. Just like that. And uh, their jaws, this is how they do it, their jaws are so flexible that they can open their mouth so wide they can swallow food that is bigger than their own body. It'd be like you swallowing a watermelon whole. It'd be kind of difficult to think about and try to do, wouldn't it? Snakes can be found and are indigenous to, which means they are to found on, any every continent in the world except for Antarctica because they are cold-blooded. Cold-blooded animals cannot generate their own heat with their body, which means that if it gets cold, they have to hibernate or they stop moving. And if they stay, stop, if they stay too cold for too long, they can actually be hurt. They could sometimes get really sick. Let's see, up seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, back to six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to one. Two, three, four, five. Five. So, did you know that snakes actually do have ears? The snake's ears are internal, not external. So they don't have any ears on the outside of their head, but they still have their eardrums and all their, they're like the same bones that you do inside their skull. You just can't see it from the outside. And they actually have really good hearing. They sense with vibrations more than hearing, though. They rely more on their sense of smell and vibration because they're so close to the ground and they're always, like, belly on the ground. Okay. Uh, that's a five. What's next? I will check these instructions over and over again, even, even if I just looked at it because I want to make sure I get it right. That's four. Okay. So... There are over 3,686 species known of snakes in the world. And that's just what they know of, because they're always finding new species of animals all the time. And snakes can hibernate. We already talked about that. But they can. They hibernate until spring, and then they come out of their wherever they, they hibernate. Sometimes they hibernate in holes, sometimes they hibernate in tunnels, or caves, or whatever. They come out and they warm up, and it takes them a little while, but once they do, they're ready to go. And, and they're always hungry when they wake up because they haven't eaten. Snakes can live for how long? A month? They can survive for months without eating anything. Because they're cold blooded, their body doesn't need to constantly burn energy or burn fuel and food in order to keep their body warm. You'll find most cold blooded animals actually have. Um, eat more often because simply because their body needs fuel to keep warm and that's how our endothermic systems are you know when we're warm blooded that's how it works we're gonna make you this one all sparkly because I like the glitter beads so we're down to three and now we're going to start the oh so exciting tail this one is literally just three two three two three two three two all the way down to the end and then there's a couple of twos together and then a couple bunch of ones together and what we're gonna do is i'm gonna do this off camera because it's about as boring or it's about as exciting as watching paint dry so why don't you go ahead and work on your snake while i work on my snake and then we'll come back to the end and see how everyone did leave me a comment if you have any um snake facts that you want to share with the group. I would love to learn more about snakes. They're pretty exciting creatures. Oh, there's a three here, so let's do... Yeah, there's two rows of three to start, that's what it is. And then three, two, three, two, three, two. All right, so let's go ahead and you work on yours and I'll work on mine. 
Then we'll come back at the end and we'll see how we did. So if you've been following along your pattern, you'll have 13, after these first two, you'll have 12, sorry, 12 of these rows of three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And what I ended up doing was actually counting out the beads as I went so that I had them laid out in the pattern that I wanted, just like I said. That's what this is over here. So um, I didn't have to worry about searching for them as I went. The last few rows are fairly simple. It's just two, 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 and I'm just alternating the colors because I'm fancy like that. You can do whatever you like, whatever works for you. Use whatever colors you have. If you've already done the gecko and you're running a little low on the sparklies, then use whatever color you want. So I find that going back and forth between them, it can get a little bumpy. And sometimes just stretching it gently can help loosen it up because the gimp does have a bit of stretch. Um, you don't want to stretch it too much or else it will just flop everywhere and won't look like a snake. But if it gets a little tight, you do have a little bit of give to work with. And the snake I've noticed is the one pattern that doesn't have a whole metric yard or a whole bunch of gimp left over to play with. This one actually cuts it a little bit close, but that's because you have a lot of loops. And the more loops you have, the smaller your rows, the more cord you're going to use. Per length, and it's also a rather long one. As long as you can still see me, I have to keep checking occasionally. Now we're just going to stick with two. Oh, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? There we go. Again, talking to your projects is totally acceptable and not weird at all. One more row of two. And then it's just four singles and we're done. This isn't super difficult or complicated. You may have noticed that the hardest part of doing the snake was just remembering which row you were on and counting them. But it looks so cool. It's so worth it. It's so worth it. All right, there's the four of those. And now we have these. Those are just Super simple. Again, make sure your lacing is flat, unless you don't mind that kind of thing. To each their own. There you go. Sometimes you just gotta make them behave. we are at the end of our snake. Let's give it a nice little smooth out while we still can, because once you tie it off, you're not going to have a whole lot of extra play with it. All right. Uh, what are you doing? Why are you out of line? And sometimes it's just a matter of centering, making sure they're all centered under each other. It can be a little bit difficult. So to secure, you dye a simple overhand knot, and then you draw just do another overhand knot. You make a square knot. There's also the option of putting some glue on this uh, like hot glue or even just tacky glue on this little knot here to kind of keep it together. If you feel like, you know, if he's going to be in a backpack and you're worried about the beads flying everywhere, we'll give it about an inch, inch and a half of string at the end just so that there is a little bit of uh, end to get uh, to, to the knot to hold on to. And then release your snake from his prison. He's free. And then you have Coils the snake, Coils the cobra. He's so cute. I like him a lot. I hope you learned a lot about snakes, because I did too. And we're gonna go for another ride, and uh, we'll be right back. We'll come right back for uh, the end of our video. 
is the end of the right wriggling reptiles take and make kit video tutorial. Today we learned how to make coils the snake, we learned how to make Ricky the gecko, and we learned how to make Leaps the frog. I do hope you enjoy this one. I hope you get creative. Make him whatever pattern you like. You can give him whatever name you like too. And if you share this with your friends, like I said, it's really easy to do more of these. And if you go on the internet and search anything bead craft, beaded animal related, you're gonna come up with, I swear, a bazillion <laughs> search hits um, with lots of different animals. Uh, the other kits um, are awesome ocean life and marvelous mammals, and they will have a video as well if this isn't what you're looking for. Or if you have a friend who got the same, a different kit. This is Vicki, I am signing off for the moment, and I'll see you on the next video.